Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a very chatty check-in and also talk to you about all of the nerdy things or learning that I've done this month aside from actual reading and this includes anything that relates to literary things even if it's very far removed. So this has been a very distracting month for me. I always think that October is going to be like my month because it's my favorite month of the year, always. And I always imagine that I'm going to spend it all reading and it's going to be amazing. And then every October, a lot of things just end up happening that distract me and pull me out of October or Victober specifically. And I got very distracted from my TBR. I decided that I'm going to try to open up December and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read all of the books that I said I was going to for Victober but I'm going to finish them from now until the end of the year and I'm going to do the same thing with the non-fiction books from November so this way I will definitely finish my TBRs without leaving them there. Sometimes I find that if I said I was going to read a book for a particular month or challenge and don't get to reading that book in that month I think, oh, well, then I'm not going to read it anymore. And I really want to get to these books. And I really cherish Victober. So I'm going to extend it a little bit. Now, the reason this month has been very distracting is that first, in the first week, I got a kitten. It's right there. I mentioned that I got Cthulhu as an emotional support animal for Humbert Humbert, who had a hard time coming out of his shell. And also for myself, because... I wanted to cuddle something and just kind of hanging out with them a lot has resulted in being very distracted. So I've been reading to them every day from this book called A Street Cat Named Bob because I thought they could like really empathize with the main character, Bob, and you know, he's from the streets, like Humbert Humbert. And they enjoy listening to me read and I enjoy reading to them. The only thing is that this also resulted in me taking a lot of naps in the afternoon. I think I'm slowly adopting cat behavior. And I'm talking like serious Rip Van Winkle kind of naps. And that's also kind of taken up a lot of time. Then on the second weekend, which was also Canadian Thanksgiving, my boyfriend Zach came from Montreal for his last visit before he graduates. And he proposed to me with this turtle ring. And there were a lot of Finding Nemo references, and a scavenger hunt, and some riddles, and a cemetery, and a lot of things. But that took up a lot of time as well, from that weekend, from doing nerdy things. My sister came to visit for our Kekri party, which I filmed and posted. I'll link it down below if you don't know what I'm talking about. All in all, I was very distracted this month. And to top it all off, I decided to just binge read this trilogy near the end of the month instead of sticking to my TBR, and yeah. So one of the first sort of nerdy-ish things that I've done this month is kind of my tradition. Every fall, I go and visit this Peter Pan statue at Avenue in St. Clair. It's kind of Toronto's best kept secret, and I don't know why no one knows about the statue, but it was raised in 1929 after a performance at one of the local high schools. And it's kind of hidden among the trees, and it has all of these beautiful details to it, like squirrels and fairies and little mice, and uh, it's just so beautiful. And I visited around fall and sometimes in the spring i don't know i just really like to have like a journey or a quest and to pick something and then just head that way this way i get a walk and it's nice and it just feels like something so um i guess i'm counting it i'm counting it because peter pan is a bookish character so it counts. It counts. I then attended a lecture at the Toronto Reference Library and this was wonderful. I took a lot of notes and the lecture was taught by Dr. Rachel Gottlieb and her lecture was on Victorian ceramics. I did not even think about pots, pans and ceramics before this lecture as it stands in Victorian literature and art. But this professor has taught me so much within like an hour and a half. 
It just blew my mind. She looked at all of this artwork from the Victorian period and she looked at where teacups were placed in a painting and what this meant symbolically and what color they were and what would this say about the class, about the person in the painting, what is it trying to say, how is the lighting framing this teacup and she also looked at paintings that had a lot of um, ceramics in the background. She also examined some mentions of teapots and ceramics in Victorian literature, which went really well with Victober. She included some Dickens, some Lady Audley's Secret, some other references from Gaskell, and how uh, cutlery and teapots and ceramics are mentioned at length in detail and how they're put there for a reason to tell us something about these characters. I also kind of joined the William Morris Society of Canada since I was at that event because I didn't know it existed. William Morris was like kind of Victorian patron of the arts in many ways. He had a printing press, he created incredible designs. We studied him at length to find out that there's a society in Canada that kind of works around William Morris and dedicates a lot of time to presenting more lectures about him or things relating to him and they have a publication every so often. So I was really happy to find these people and I'm glad I, I joined in and we'll see where that leads. You might end up seeing a lot more from this in future nerding out videos. And then I tried Curiosity Stream for a little bit. I was curious, but it's basically like Netflix for documentaries. And I found this one documentary that piqued my interest on Jack London. It's two episodes long, it's about two hours. It was really well done. I also discovered two new podcasts. So one of them is called The Folklore Podcast. So in the series, the main host invites people from all around the world to talk about elements from their culture and from their fairy tales and folklore. And I listened to a few. There are over 200 episodes, so I have a lot to catch up on. But what really blew my mind, and I should have thought about this before, but I watched this, I listened to this one on Baba Yaga, and the guest had a very thick Russian accent, and for some reason I was taken aback, like, whoa, why, why does she have such a th thick Russian accent? And I just realized that I've been so used to hearing people talk about fairy tales and folklore in English from England or America or Canada, and I never even considered how a person might actually sound from their own country speaking about their own folklore and fairy tales. It was amazing. I will link the podcast down below. It's incredible. And the second podcast I found is called Fairy Tales for Forgotten Children. And this is kind of new fairy tales that people have created and reading them out loud. They have a very... Uh, active Facebook group as well and I'm in the middle of both of these right now and I'm just really enjoying them. I then realized that I really missed Old English and it's something I didn't want to let go of. I spent a lot of time trying to learn how the language structure works and memorizing all these words and I thought I don't want to lose the skill. So I printed off the Battle of Malden and I started sort of translating it and working with it and that's just something I do on like in between activities. It's just been very challenging. I already forgot so much of it. The last thing that I did, which was kind of a promise to you that this will come up again and again, is the Bootmakers Society. The Bootmakers, as I mentioned before, is a Sherlock Holmes group in Toronto. I'm definitely the youngest member in the group. They are so passionate and intelligent and creative. And every month they get together and do something related to Sherlock Holmes. They have an assignment, they sing songs, they're just wonderful. Like, I cannot emphasize how much I love this group. This month, the meeting was at a tennis club, and this resulted in a very interesting walk through Toronto because the subway was down that day, and the place was decorated for Halloween, so it had all these really cool decorations in the lobby. And it was kind of a brunch where we all just had brunch and talked about Sherlock, and there was a very interesting speaker this time. He talked about this book called Sherlock Holmes is Like. And this is sort of an anthology collecting all of these essays by various people 
discussing who Sherlock Holmes resembles, whether it's contemporary or his contemporary or people before Sherlock Holmes was even written. The presenter was one of the essays and his essay was on George Lewis. Uh, so we're planning to have more guest speakers from this series, from this book. Uh, but I didn't even know this book existed. So this was very illuminating for me and I'm probably going to try to get a hold of it soon. So this month we had to read The Final Problem and we had this quiz at the end. And on top of that, we had a song. So the song was composed by this one member. And the song is called You're a Mean One, Moriarty, sung to the tune of You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. So we were singing about this. And I'm pretty sure the staff of the tennis club was just looking at us like, what are these people doing? But it was so much fun. And I just really, really enjoyed it. I can't wait to go to the next thing. And I love having homework. I love when people tell me what to read for an event. And it was very short, the final problem. And after you do the quiz, people get prizes. So this time I got a freebie and this is memoirs from Mrs. Hudson's Kitchen. They actually call all the helpers Mrs. Hudson's. So this is a cookbook. And what it does, it takes all of the food mentioned from Sherlock Holmes in addition to other stuff. and it's a it's a recipe book it's a cookbook and it's all victorian recipes and at the same time it collects what other people from um, the time period have quoted about certain things bread and butter pudding toad in the hole serve six and the last thing that i sort of did that's related to books in a way is i got very nostalgic about my cassette player when i was little i used to listen to fairy tales on loop on a cassette player and i would like to collect cassettes with fairy tales on them i decided that's like my new project right now so i got this like cassette player from amazon probably and i listened to this cassette tape of Le Mis, the musical and i cried and it was beautiful and i really loved it but there's something kind of special about listening to it on a format where you don't get distracted by texts or other pop-ups on your phone and you're just kind of fully in the zone of that sound and it's something that i haven't experienced since most of my regular audiobooks come from audible and it's on my actual phone and a lot of things are always happening and it's very distracting that's it those are all the bookish things i've done this month aside from actual reading please share with me what you've done this month i look forward to hearing from you as always and i will see you in my next video bye